Especially now that Mark Rober did a video that got 17 million views on it. Now, it's quite an uh, explosive experiment, um, which is why we're keeping the camera slightly lower than we normally would. Um, so, what I'm about to add is 40 mils of hydrogen peroxide or H2O2. Pretty toxic, that's why I'm wearing gloves. And then I will add the dishwashing liquid, the soap, to, um, to help aid in the reaction and give it the explosive results that you see in all the videos. And then finally, I will add our catalyst. This will help speed up the reaction, but won't be used up in the results. And there we have it. Now, the reaction taking place here is a self-oxidization reduction reaction and it is the hydrogen peroxide breaking down into H2O, which is water, and O, which is oxygen. Now the oxygen is getting trapped by our dishwashing liquid, and the entire rea reaction is sped up by the catalyst, the potassium iodide, which is used up, which is used in the reaction, but isn't used up in the result. So if I added more hydrogen peroxide, it would start foaming a bit again. Now you'd see probably the steam coming off, if the quality is good enough, you'll see the steam coming off. And that is the that is from the energy of the H2O2 breaking down, from those bonds breaking. And that is the water, that's the H2O turning to steam, which tells you that this is at least 100 degrees Celsius. Um, yeah, so that's Elton's first. This is the acetylene gas experiment. Now, of course, I'm going to be wearing my safety glasses here as I don't want my eyeballs to melt. So, what I've got in front of me, got some water and some calcium carbide. And what I'm going to do, put this calcium carbide, get some in there, and put it in the water. Now what's going on at the moment is calcium carbide naturally oxidizes over a long period but the water here is acting as a catalyst which is speeding that oxidization up rapidly. As you can see there's a lot of gas being produced, you can see all the bubbles. That is called acetylene gas. Acetylene gas is flammable. Here's a flame. It went out. Acetylene gas is flammable. <laughs> but Matches aren't very good. There we go. So you can see when they went off, 
there's all the soot around the edge of this beaker. And that is produced, that is carbon left over from the incomplete combustion reaction that is taking place when I take a match to the gas. And you can see there's still more bubbles being produced. So I can do that again, multiple times. I would have a sleeve. There. Now, acetylene gas is a triple bonded hydrocarbon and the issue with those is they're unstable and that's why there is carbon released every time the acetylene gas is ignited. Uses for acetylene gas, um, it could be used in mining lights, so a miner would have a small pouch that they'd have water drip into and it would have calcium carbide in it, usually a sizable rock, so it would slowly release gas and that would feed through a tube up to a light in the helmet. The issue with that is mining, especially coal mining, fire, don't go well together, plus that's not really Electricity is a lot better for pretty much everything now. It could also be used for stage lights because it can be quite bright and yeah again if it was before the use of electricity then it's quite a good option but still a bit dangerous. Another use for acetylene gas is in welding torches so it gets mixed with high levels of oxygen and then compressed which creates a close to complete reaction, a lot more than you'd see in its current state where obviously a lot of smoke and soot coming off of it. And yeah, this combination of oxygen and acetylene is, can create flame hot enough that it can melt through metal. So this experiment is called the Big Bertha, so I've got the full bottle. And we've got an even bigger bottle, which is called an even bigger Bertha. And what do you get when two Big Berthas go together? You get a baby Bertha. Because that's how biology works. And so for this experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to get the bottle, make sure it's got nothing inside of it. It's and we're going to put some methylated spirits in the bottle. We're going to roll the methylated spirit around inside the bottle to make sure there's an even coating on the outside of the bottle. Then we're going to pour the remaining methylated spirits into another bottle. It's fine. And so when we've got the bottle sitting there with the methylated spirits on the outside, it'll be fuming. So the liquid methylated spirits is turning into gaseous methylated spirits. And we can ignite the gaseous methylated spirits with a splint, because I was told I wasn't allowed to drop a match in there. Now that will have created a blue flame which is called complete combustion. Complete combustion is when all the methylated spirits turns into carbon dioxide and water. Right, so I'll get rid of the bottle. Complete combustion is characterised by the blue flame which is really hot. If you've got incomplete combustion, which happens when you don't have enough oxygen, you get a nice yellow flame. The reason we use methylated spirits is because it's a short carbon chain molecule. And short carbon chain molecules require less oxygen to burn completely than longer carbon chain molecules. Right, so now we've got an even bigger bottle which has even more methylated spirits in here. And the even more methylated spirits is fuming to create even more methylated spirits gas. And this even more methylated spirits gas can be ignited with a splint that's slightly longer because I'm too scared of this. And it creates a lot of even louder noise. This is largely due to the fact that the combustion container is much larger in comparison to the opening than the smaller bottle. This create means that the air coming out, the flames in the air coming out the top of the bottle are coming out faster, which creates more noise. And 
as you can see, there is actually water and some liquid in the bottom because complete combustion creates water and carbon dioxide. So it's two products. This experiment is called the hydrogen balloon experiment. So, I mean, obviously, I have balloons, right? But I don't, I don't have any hydrogen. So, I'm gonna collect the hydrogen, or I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get the hydrogen. I'm gonna get it from somewhere. So, I'm using sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and I'm going to um, react that in this flask with aluminium foil which will release hydrogen gas. So, obviously for this experiment, safety-wise, safety goggles, lab coat, gloves, because sodium hydroxide is corrosive, and I don't really want to get that on my hands. So, yeah. Voila. So that was obviously the hydrogen balloon because that was full of hydrogen. Right, so previously you will have seen the Big Bertha and the uh, acetylene gas experiment. So Big Bertha being a complete combustion and acetylene gas being the incomplete com combustion, right? So obviously properties of a complete combustion, blue flame, no smoke, it's clean, clean burn and incomplete being smoky and orange flame and just generally, well, there are other products, but yeah, it's smoky and not very nice burn. So you did see an orange flame for this, um, this combustion, the combustion of hydrogen, but the actual combustion of hydrogen itself is clean, it's a complete combustion, it's just hydrogen and oxygen to H2O water. Um, but the orange flame that you saw was because of the number of carbons in the rubber. So the balloon, obviously, balloon, it's made of plastic, rubbery stuff. So that was parts of the balloon um, burning, which makes it kind of sooty. Not sure if you can. There isn't any soot on this, probably because. Okay. But anyway, you, it's, it, it's a complete combustion paired with an incomplete combustion. So technically, just combusting the combustion of hydrogen is uh, complete, but because we have the, it's encased in the balloon, which makes it sound cooler, and because you know you can't really combust hydrogen when it's mixed with all the air. Um, it uh, has an orange flame. Right, so a lot of energy was released in this combustion. Um, a lot of it is released as sound energy um, and heat. Um, yeah, because it releases energy, it's combustion, it releases energy. Because of the complete combustion, it releases a lot of energy, or at least more energy than an incomplete combustion would. And um, yeah, where you might have seen this before is uh, the Hindenburg. <laughs> 
We have some more, so I'll deal with that. Right. Ready? Ah. Uh no. -huh. Yep. Right. Let's see if I can blow both of them up. Yeah. Okay, this is flaming colors, where we burn dangerous chemicals and see what colors they make for your entertainment. Hooray! Okay, so this this is lithium chloride, the same as this one, or this is lithium chloride dissolved into a solution. Generally, it burns red when put into a flame. This is copper chloride solution. It, it may appear green, but it actually blue burns blue when put into a flame. And this over here is potassium chloride. It burns it a light purple or lilac when put into the flame. I've soaked the cotton balls so since the cotton balls don't produce a lot of orange from the carbon and that way we can get as much we can have the highest chemical or iron ratio to carbon when in the flame. Time to light it on fire. Okay, time to burn lithium. Look, it's kind of red, but it's getting stronger. It gets redder as the carbon burns away, like when the cotton ball turns into a charred husk. And it burns really red. Alright, uh, so what determines the color of an ion all has to do with the electron arrangement. When you heat an ion up, the electrons want to move away up a layer or away from the nucleus to make room for the extra energy. But since they can't sustain those energy levels, they must move back down. But when they move back down, they must release their energy and that energy gets released as light. The more electron levels they descend, or the further down they move, the, the more energy they release. We can see um, energy levels um, in the middle of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is where light waves are, which is pretty much the range of different light waves you can get. And red being the lowest energy, and blue being the highest energy we can see, and purple is a lie, it does not exist. Okay, time for copper chloride. You can see here it burns like a greeny blue. It kind of depends on the heat or how much energy you're putting into those electrons and how far they have to move. So yeah, that's cool. You can hear a cool fizzing sound. Generally, the bigger the nucleus, the more electrons, therefore you generally have a higher electron level. It's only really the valence electrons that generally move. Probably should point that out. The higher the, the higher the, dis or the greater the descent, the greater the energy levels, the more likely or the closer to blue it will be on the spectrum. The, the lower, the smaller the descent, the smaller the jump in energy levels, the closer it will be to red. I mean, you can get less than red, though like, you can't get much since you're already dealing with like only one or two energy level jumps. It's possible though, it's pretty rare or like only a small, very few cases. Should see a lilac, but it's not working. So here we have the purple lilac from the potassium. Can't see very much. Very dim, not very powerful. 
that's why we generally don't use it. Uh, you can kind of see it. It's kind of properly. Makes a nice sizzling sound. That is Flaming Colors in a Nutshell with my excellent commentary. And my sharp sense of wit and my amazing humor. This is Flaming Colors Part 2 Electric Boogaloo. Um, we are going to be doing pretty much the same thing as Patty did, but better. Uh, we've got our four chemicals here. We've got our copper chloride, we've got our sodium chloride, lithium chloride and potassium chloride. This one burns a um, green-blue, this one burns um, a orange, uh, but a different tone than a normal flame. Uh, this is lithium, it will burn red and potassium that will burn uh, purple. Um, I'm going to be doing a kind of a spiral of um, flaming colours. It, it's a spiral. It's going to be a giant pillar of coloured flame. So... I've set this up and I'm gonna be setting this on fire now. So what you'll um, be seeing is a whole bunch of different colours from all the all the different colours of string and it turn into a beautiful pillar of flame. Now it's a bit um, it's kind of all mixed and um, it's very hot so you might want to stay away from this if you ever do this at home, which I do not recommend. Um, yeah, so you can see all the different colours, especially down here, um, there are all the different colours. It was mostly orange because Methodes Burt's unfortunately does burn orange and that, that kind of sucks. Right. So when, um, when the chemicals burn red, that means they're burning with less energy. If they're burning blue, that means they're burning with more energy. And as you saw when we burned it, it was mostly orange. Now, uh, when, it, when it burns orange, that means it's burning carbon. And since the string here had a lot of carbon, it was probably most likely to be dominant. And methylated spirits also burns orange, so, that, so that's why it kind of dominated over the whole thing. Um, but um, yeah, if you zoom in closer, you can see all the different colors. Thank you.